So.
Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another, uh, like some people call it, uh, how, how they do it? I forgot. But anyway, welcome to Faith Based Workplace. I'm Solomon Savoy. If you don't know who I am, I'm, uh, I'm Solomon, but we're going to be on here and talking about, I got the subject a little bit different from what I usually talk about. I mean, I know the the thumbnail what got me, you know, and I did the thumbnail. I had to ask my wife, I was like, you think this look good, you know, to put on on uh <laughs> on YouTube, but she said nah, it was good. So, you know, the thumbnail is kind of what I think is gonna draw people in and probably the title too, because a lot of us, you know, have been in love with narcissists, obviously. Yeah. Some of us got married to them, to some of them, and some of them. You know, we dated for a while. We might have a child with this person or children with this person. Uh, some of us might be going through a divorce because we realized that the love that we had for them wasn't the same because they had only lust for us. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight because the thing about it is, hey, how you doing, Liz? Yeah, that's it. I don't know why I can't think of my own letters or my things. I just woke up not too long ago. <laughs> uh, FBWP, faith-based workplace, short, short. Thank you for that, lyricist. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the thing about it. You know, when I think about this topic, I was like, you know what? We all, there's always a question as to, you know, why? You know, we, well, I love them. I showed them so much. I bought them things. I took them on trips. I bought them cars. I did this. I did that. Why did they just discard me? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight because them discarding you has really nothing to do with you. And I'll explain that in a little while. It's, because, you know, they don't love you like you love them. But let's speak to everybody in the chat. Oh, let me see you all in here. I didn't catch everybody. Let me see everybody that's in here. I know Brother Rizzo is in here. Thank you for that, brother. I've seen Joy Pink Girl Teachers. I've seen her here, my sister. Um, check her out on her lives. Hey, how you doing, Carl Kruger? Hey, how you doing, uh, Tammy Russell? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Kimberly Yinko, thank you for being here. Hey, she on TikTok now. Okay. I didn't know who that was. I did, I did not know who you was. I was like, who is this liking all my content? I was like, who is this? I just had to ask him. You said that. I was like, okay. Okay. I, I get it. So thank you for uh, hey, following me on TikTok as well. Uh, thank you for that. HT, hello. How you doing? Uh, our sister Lyris is in here. Hey, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Cause Cassandra, hey, how you doing? Welcome. Blessings. Blessings to you as well. Let me see. Mickey Wells, how you doing? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Tiffany, thank you for being here. As y'all come in, just hit the like button. Uh, you know, as it helps with the algorithm and everything. You know, channel steady growing. I think we we passed 2160 or somewhere around there, close to 2160. I don't know. You know, the thing goes up and down, but we still uh still growing. So hit the like button as y'all come in, and I appreciate it. Thank you for spreading that, Brother Rizzo. Jasmine, hey, how you doing? Jasmine, that's our resident DJ in the uh, room. So, Jasmine, you want any song? Jasmine can help you figure out what that song is. <laughs> I'm just saying. My wife say, sounds like a juicy topic. Yeah, I think this might be a doozy one right here. This might be a doozy. <laughs> we go see. We go see. I think it is. How you doing, Stephanie? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Hey, Tony, you made it. All right. I was talking to sister early on uh, TikTok. She said, I'm going to be there. So I seen the title. I wanted to uh, catch this one. <laughs> Thank you for being here. God bless y'all. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Tragically, we did. We loved a narcissist and fell in love with this sorry joker. And look where we at now. We all together there as one big happy family. So I guess at the end of the day, I guess it kind of worked out, I guess. <laughs> If you look at it that way, how you doing, Dr. G? Welcome, welcome. She's a really a doctor. I don't just say doctor just to say it. She's really a doctor. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not making that up. She really is. Let me see. I think I caught everybody. If I miss you, hey, don't blame me. I'm just scrolling through trying to make sure I catch everybody. Let me see. Let me see what else we got in here. Let me make sure. Okay, I'm at the bottom. I think I caught everybody, so... Thank y'all again. Thank y'all for being here. God bless y'all. You know, like I say, hit the like button as you come in. You know, participate in the in the actual chat. You know, we have Shannon and Rizzo always share like a bunch of different things that's going on. Uh, you know, kind of how to get in touch with me if you're looking for life coaching and all these things. 
she put all these things in there, like national. Uh, I'm glad she put that in there. I ain't even got to click on uh, national suicide prevention lifeline. Hey, that's the number. If you're dealing with a situation, you know, like I like I said before, sometimes you can't reach us. You know, we, we might be unreachable at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. You know, even Joy and others, you know, but, you know, uh, call that number so you can get help. Call on God, but also call that number, you know, for, for help as well. You know, we need somebody to talk to in person and things like that. So thank you for putting it out there. And she also got the uh, domestic violence hotline as well. 1-800-700-SAFE. 1-800-700-SAFE. That's for men and women. We got, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's for women. No, it's for men and women because men get domestically assaulted by women as well. Ask me how I know. I told y'all my story, how that happened. I, yeah. All right, y'all. Let me see. Let me jump in with this. If you want to reach Shannon, all her stuff, Instagram, TikTok, you know, website, you know, she has phenomenal shirts and gear and sweatshirts. And I know it's hot right now, but hey, you might want to get your sweatshirts right now because, hey, you know, later on when it's cold, you know, uh, things are hard to come by. So I always buy stuff, you know, when it's off sale, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Uh, and then following me, everything, you know, Instagram, TikTok, everything you want to follow me. I drop a lot of TikTok videos, you know, ask some of the people that's in here, you know, we communicate back and forth. Hey, how you doing, Christine S? Welcome, welcome. Let me see what Todd said. She said, eh, let me see. She said, uh, did I click on the right one? She said, yeah, I had to make it. And I'm on time. Yeah, you're on time for this one. You're on time for this one. <laughs> you here. You're on time. <laughs> Oh, and uh, our sister, uh, Coach Natisha, let's keep lifting up in prayer. She said that she's she's doing better, but I know she did tell me she does have one more surgery to go. So we want to keep her in prayer as she deals with, you know, surgery. So she might pop in. She says she's going to try to pop in for this one. But if she don't, you know, uh, if she do, you know, just say we, you know, you see Coach Natisha, Mama Tish. Most of us know if you don't, you'll see her. And she pops in. Let's just make sure that we praying for her and just praying for things that's going on around the world. Like, like Ukraine and oh, they got all kind of stuff going on, and we, we might talk about it a little bit later with everything that's going on with food shortages and all this stuff. It has nothing to do with this message, but I think it still need to be said because I say we family, so we family. I'm going to share with y'all what I know, so I'll be wrong to just hold some of these things back. Now, Jordan share some things with me, and some others on on uh, TikTok actually have shared some things with me, and it's only right that you know I share this stuff with y'all because it's. It's happening. You know, I actually shared that with Tone, and I think I shared it with, uh, I think Tammy Russell, I know I shared it with my wife and Rizzo and different people. You follow them on TikTok, you know, that's how you get some of these, these messages. But yeah, so we have a lot of things that's going on. So, all right, y'all. All right. I think we got all the announcements out the way. I think we welcome everybody. Everybody hitting the like button as they're coming in. Thank you for that. Appreciate you hitting the like button. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you watching the video. I just appreciate y'all. Y'all have no idea for, you know, all the support, the love and support that you give, not only myself, but my wife, North Free Living as well. As you're seeing, I don't know if you noticed, but her channel, then it's on, it's, I call it on Hercules right now, because if you look at her channel from where it was about eight weeks ago, that's how you know when God is in things, things start to happen. And But we say that, but it's different when you can see these things start to happen. So seeing a channel come from where it was to where it is right now, the way it's still going. Hey, how you doing, Tony Kemper's Tony Capers, welcome, brother. It's just awesome to see the path and you can see it. So I can testify and witness and say, you know what? I knew I see where it came from, but I see where it's at right now, and I still see where it's going. And it's just awesome to see how God is doing that. So also, you know, joy, same thing. I see my sister just reaching new heights and doing different things. And, you know, it's awesome to see the things around us. But again, again, before I get started, let me play a, a quick intro. I know we've been talking for a while. Let me hit y'all with this little intro right quick so I can get this thing set up. It's only going to be about 25 seconds and we're we going to be ready to go. So I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Starting soon. All right, y'all. Give me about 25 seconds and here we go.
All right, we back, we back, we ready to rock. As you know, the, lot, the live stream already started, but hey, I just wanted to drop that in there so we all know that we actually, we starting. Hey, how you doing? Uh, I think it's Juanita. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. All right, y'all. Let's get into this one. I know that's what y'all here for. Y'all here to see what we're going to talk about with this one. And this one, you know, is still in love with a narcissist, but they only lust over you. Still in love with a narcissist, but they only lust over you. And some of us are still in love with a narcissist, but they only lusting over you. I'm going to say that one more time. I know it sounds like a broken record. Still in love with a narcissist, but they only lusting over you. And that could be old relationships, new relationships, current relationships. You and the shoe fits weird. What do I mean by that? I ain't going to even say it's easier said than done. Let's discuss this. I I like topics like this. You know, you get to get down deep into it. And we're talking to all adults. So, hey, we can talk and have a conversation with my brothers and sisters in Christ. So it's something that needs to be said. So still in love with a narcissist, but they only lust over you. So you love this person. You were willing to, some of y'all are willing to die for this person. Some of y'all are willing to be with this person no matter what happens no matter what they do no matter what they say no matter hey how you doing vanessa ren welcome that's another sister has a youtube channel check her out welcome thank you for being here it doesn't matter what they do what they say how they treat you we still love them we love them and is nothing going to change that until it's that last straw that you know the old saying that breaks the camel's back and then finally it clicks, it registers, and we finally figure out, like, you know what? This jolly joker really don't love me. But it takes so much. It takes so much, uh, uh, you know, things happening to us and, you know, us hiding things from our family and don't want to tell. Ask me how I know. I'm telling you what I did. You know, you didn't want to tell your family what's going on with a situation. You kind of like me. You kind of want to keep those things personal. You want to keep them private. But while we're trying to keep them personal and private, the only thing we're really doing is protecting the narcissist because our love for them, we don't want to hurt them. We don't want to hurt maybe their careers or their job or you don't want to hurt their ego if it's a man and if it's a woman, you just don't want to hurt her. But at the end of the day, all we're doing is hurting ourselves. All we doing is hurting ourselves. Think about what I'm saying. We holding on to something that's never grabbed a hold to us. What do I mean by that? Even when you are standing there holding hands with this sorry joker saying, I do if you got married to him, you was holding their hands. They never really was holding your hand. That's good. That's good. They never really was holding your hands. They just had their hands on top of yours and you was holding their hands. Think about what I'm saying. So you stood there at all to us, stood there in that courtroom or Stood there wherever you got married at. I don't care if it was Las Vegas. It doesn't matter. But you held their hands and they wasn't holding on to you. See, it started off wrong. Some of us got in these relationships and we started off wrong. We started off wrong. So to think about it, we holding on to them. They not holding on to us. So therefore, like, like Vanessa Ren just said, I just seen you say, hey, man, holding on to Satan. Yeah, you holding on to a demonic, evil figure. You see flesh and bones, but you have no idea what you're really holding on to when you're standing at that altar. Because I guarantee if you did, you would let go of the hands and take off running down the aisle and never look back. But see, we, we, we don't see it. We just see what we see. We see what we fell in love with. And them looking at you, they just see a trophy wife or a trophy husband or a sugar daddy or a sugar mama or like this is titled they see somebody they can just lust over they attracted to your physical attraction it's only physical it don't go no deeper than that i'm gonna say that one more time it's only physical it doesn't go any deeper than that they like your booty and your beauty and they like your muscles and your pecs but they don't love you for your heart and they don't love you for you being you. They just love what you look like on the outside. They love that when they homeboys come over for the football game that they got a chef wife that's in the kitchen, but she's a dime piece. You know, she's shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle. And if she's a woman, you know, she want her girls to come over to the swim party because her husband going to come out there and show his, not a six pack, he's going to show his eight pack and show his chest muscles. And she want all the girls just looking at her husband 
See, y'all, I know I'm stepping on somebody's toes right now. Y'all like, nah, not me. And that's cool if it's not you. That's fine. But just think about what I'm saying. So she only married to him because of what he looks like. Or she married to him because, girl, look at the house he just bought me. Look at the car he just bought. He just bought me a Bentley yesterday. I, you know, I gave him some last night and he went and bought me a Bentley. I know what I'm talking about when he say gave him some. We adults, but the thing about it is she still doesn't love him. She's only using him for what he can do for. Her. And it's the same thing, like I just said, the other way, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the Jezebel or the Ahab or whichever way it is, they only go use you for what you can. <laughs> Tammy Russell say, wait, hold on. I got to find that one. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all starting off already. So I said six pack or eight pack. Tammy then went off and said, <laughs> she say mine had a keg. Well, we take six pack and throw that out the window. We all know what a keg mean. That mean he had a flubber belly, a big belly. Belly stick out further than his. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay. Hey, how you doing, Lolly? Welcome, welcome. Man, thank you for that. It's always good to laugh about these situations. But again, you know, I like to break this down. So let's let's get on a breakdown. Let's 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 all start on the same page. Let's let's level off. And I know we know what lust and love mean for the, but for those that don't know and don't understand what I'm saying when the narcissist uh when I'm saying the narcissist only lust after you. Let's break this down. So what is lust? Easy. Let's break this down. Lust. Very strong sexual desire. So they got a sexual desire. Now, see, for my sisters, for y'all that don't know, see, some men can see you in a restaurant or a nightclub or the shopping mall, at church, at the inauguration. I don't care where you at. They can see you and they can have a strong sexual desire and don't even know your name. Think about what I'm saying. They do not know your name and already they sexually attracted to you. Now, some men would say, well, we just men. That's how we are. I, ain't, well, I don't know about all that, but okay. That's, that's cool if they want to say that, but think about what I'm saying. They do not know your name, but yet and still, they want to have sex with you on day one. They lusting over you. It's not love because I don't see how you fall in love with somebody and you don't even know their name. You just see them from across the street. You're like, oh man, she fine. She's a dime piece. Let me run over there and holler at her. Hey, little mama or mama or whatever they call you. You know, these, I don't do none of them, them lines. I'm married. I ain't got to say none of that stuff. But whatever they calling you these days, they run over there across the street and they see this body, the curvy figure and all this stuff, the lips, the, the eyeliner, all this stuff done up, hair and all this stuff. And they lusting over you and they tell you all these sweet nothings that you want to hear. Now, see, this is where they get you. See, so you've been praying for a man. Remember, I told you, you got to be specific about your prayer. So you praying for a man, and here come this jolly joker from across the street. You say you want a man that's 6'5", you know, 220 pounds, ripped up. He fits. He checks all those, but he's 6'5". He's 6'4 and a half. Okay. Check. Box check. You say you want him brown skin. Box check. You want somebody with green eyes. Box check. Now, look what your, your box, your list. We going down your list, so we checking it off. So you, you say you want him to have nice skin, smooth skin. Box check. You want to have abs of steel? Box check. Now, one time did you say, I want a, a golly man. I want a man that's going to leave me my family. See, you going all physical and I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You're checking all the boxes, though. You are checking all the boxes. But I don't know about you. You're going down the wrong list. I mean, it's cool to have some of these things, but don't get caught up in the physical because what happens is they lusting over you and you end up lusting over them. So therefore, you won't really have true love to later on in the relationship because, yeah, like Jasmine said, you want a pretty boy. So you want them to dress nice, have the nice car and, you know, ripped up, look like an athlete and all this other stuff. But, okay, do you know how to read the Bible? Do you know Bible verses? Do you know that Jesus died for you and me? Do you know those things so biblical a dis a disordered desire for sexual pleasure basically the same as the one i found basically the same thing if you think about it so you think about it that way that's all lust is it didn't say nothing about you don't see no mention of love or nothing that say a very strong sexual desire that's sexual that's nothing to do 
there. Like my sister Georgia said, all that matters is not gold. And like Juanita said, a shell with no substance. That, that's good. That's deep right there. A shell with no substance. So you're looking at this physical form, this physical being, this, this person in front of you, and you're attracted to everything body. But when you look at their heart, they had an old saying back when I was a teenager, they heart pump Kool-Aid. What does that mean? That mean that, see, back in the day, it meant that they were scared. But what I'm talking about right now, see, they heart pump Kool-Aid. What I'm saying is, that's not a real man or woman in this in, in this discussion right here. That's not really what you're looking for. It, it, it looks cool. They look good. They got the... Let me take this off. All right. They have all the physical traits that you're looking for in a man or a woman. But at the end of the day, like Juanita just said, a shell with no substance. Boy, that's... I don't know about y'all, but that, I don't want none of that. I don't want a person that has no substance. I don't want a person that doesn't talk about God. I doesn't want a person that doesn't understand narcissist abuse. Now, I get if they don't understand it, but this is the other flip side. The thing is, they got to be willing to at least learn about it because everybody don't know about narcissism. Heck, I just learned about it a few years ago myself, so I'm not going to say that, but you have to at least be willing to understand it. Ooh, Lyrics, that's good. Y'all coming in with zingers already. We ain't even get we ain't getting nowhere yet. What she where is it? She said, attracted to an illusion of confusion. Boy, I don't know about y'all, but it's like being out there in the desert. They say when y'all there too long, you don't drink enough water, you just start seeing mirages and just illusions and different things. And you like, man, you'll see the six foot five chocolate man then. He ain't gonna be there. You're gonna run over there and grab a uh, uh, a thing of sand. You go fall right into a hill, and that's what you go hit. He not there. I'm just saying him. Him not there. I'm just telling y'all what I know. Especially out there not drinking water. Just think about what I'm saying. All right, first Bible verse, Galatians five sixteen. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you would not gratify the desires of the flesh. See, if you walk by the Spirit. It don't matter if the six foot five man that you think you've been praying for come running over there. Your discernment is going to tell you that, nah, that's not him. It don't matter what he looked like. I don't care if he pulled up in a Maserati or a Lamborghini or a Bugatti, whatever car you want to name, or a motorcycle. I know some of y'all women love motorcycles. If he pulled up in the motorcycle, you're, your discernment is going to tell you something isn't right about him. See, he fits all the physical criteria, but he pulled up on you in that beautiful car and he got out and his pickup line was hey little mama now some of y'all y'all might like that i don't know but his pickup line was wrong the way he pulled up on you was wrong from jump but he just checked all the physical traits hey how you doing yoke breaker yoke yoke breaker i always said it fast yoke breaker how you doing good ev good evening everyone good evening to you as well so you got to realize that Sometimes what you're looking at is not what you're getting. What I mean by that, you ever bought something at the store and you open up the box or you order something off of Amazon or whatever it is, you open the box and it was broken. It didn't work. You might have ordered a vase like the, like the vase I have here, as you see up there. You might have ordered this vase or bought the vase and then you got home. It was in broken pieces. So it looked good when you got it, but when you got home from, you know, transport or whatever, something happened to where it's broken. So now you got a couple of options. See, you can try to super glue this thing back together using Gorilla, gorilla Glue. It ain't going to look the same. It ain't going to look the same. It's going to be a little bit different. Because if you, if you think, about, think about that vase, that vase is the work in like 20 different pieces. I'm going to have a hard time gluing that back together and figuring out. Two pieces, three pieces, three bigger pieces. Yeah, maybe you can glue that and get that. But it still won't look right. It won't look like that. I can tell you that much. So my, my, my point is what I'm trying to get you to understand is, see, sometimes you look at this physical form and you're thinking, this is what I want. This is what I need. But your discernment should tell you, I don't want none of that. I hope y'all understand it so far. See, these broken pieces. Now we all broken. So don't. 
make me uh, don't 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 listen to what i'm saying and think that i'm saying that we all healed that's i never said that i'm still healing myself what i am saying though this is what i'm saying what i am saying we all are broken but we putting in work so i understand the difference between lust and love you should understand the difference between those two as well like my wife just said y'all dropping all kind of zingers and i love it okay let me see where is it i just seen it Okay, there it go, there it go. She said, two broken vessels coming together, a whole mess. A whole mess. So, see, if you try to take this vase, I know you can't see the other vase, but I have another vase over here. It's taller, it's way much bigger. It's sort of like we talked about, this is good. It's, it's kind of like what we're talking about. The uh, It's right off the camera, but it's, it's, it's kind of like we're talking about with the six foot four man. See, that vase over there, that represents the man. This vase right here represents the woman. If I take those two vases together, see this vase over here that represents the man, it says a saying on there. I'll read it. It said, life is measured by the breaths you take, but the moments that take your breath, but but the moments that take your breath, breath away. So life is not measured by the breath you take, but the moments that take your breath away. Isn't that some of y'all that, that we talking about with the with the lust? I didn't even see, I didn't even know I was gonna read that, but think about what I'm saying. So that's kind of like lust over there because you thinking that's it. That that statue over there, you thinking that's the man, that's the woman, that's the that's what I've been praying for. And then, but if you take this vase and it's broken, and I take that vase over there and it was broken and try to mash the two together, it's gonna look like a deformed piece of junk. I know y'all might not get that. I don't know. I I, I know my I, I know my family is very, very intelligent, but think about what I'm saying. This vase is, we had to measure, it's probably, I don't know, no more than eight inches high. This vase, if I had to measure, it, probably about 13, 14 inches high. What I'm trying to tell you is I couldn't take the one with the words and the one with the pretty blown glass and try to mesh them together and say, oh, I created something beautiful because it's going to look like junk. It's going to look like straight junk, straight junk. My wife said, I get that joy in there laughing. It, see, you, you folk, lad, like my wife said, you focus on the wrong thing. So I want you to understand that. So two broke vessels coming together, that would be a mess. That 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 vase and that vase putting together going to be a whole mess. <laughs> Joy said a deformed piece of junk. That That's what it is, sir. A deformed piece of junk. It sure is. All right, let's get back into this. Man, it's not a long, man. Well, I don't think it's long. Depending on what happens during the course of this. <laughs> It depends on what happens. Y'all know how we do over here. So again, but I say, I, uh, but I say, walk by the spirit, and you would not gratify the desires of the flesh. See, if you walk by the spirit, you go realize that that over there is a deformed, like my sister put, is a deformed piece of junk. A deformed piece of junk. Like George just said, she just put in the, he said it could never work. It don't matter how many times you try to re-glue that, unglue it, glue it back together, torch it together, burn it together. I don't care what you do with that. That's going to look like a deformed piece of junk. Nobody's going to buy those two vases together. I wish I, I, I would get up and stand up and show you the two vases. That way you can really see nobody is going to buy that vase mixed with that vase because it just doesn't make sense. It's going to be a deformed piece of junk. So when someone lusts after you, they don't necessarily love you. See, you can have a situation where someone loves you. Be careful with what I say. You can have a situation where someone actually loves you and they lust after you. Let's say like you married. Or some of y'all, y'all in a, a, you know, that's your, how y'all say that? You exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. Okay. Anyway. I, I, I'll break the ask me about that later on and this and I'll tell you what I think we, we exclusive I didn't see somebody exclusive that wasn't exclusive with the person that's being exclusive with so yeah let that sink in I'm not gonna say it again because I don't think I can but let that sink in but they was exclusive and need matter of fact neither one of the people was exclusive with the person they said that's gonna be exclusive with let that sink in but they exclusive they in love no Y'all hot in the pants, like Shannon said the other day. Y'all hot in the pants, and y'all lusting after one another. It might be a little bit of love. I'm not going to say you don't love each other at all, but yeah. Okay. So just understand, when someone lusts after you, they don't necessarily love you. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand about narcissists or even people like that.
because let's get it let, let's just be honest everybody's not a narcissist i get that i know i talk about it a lot i know shannon talks about it a lot i know joy talks about it a lot i know other people talk about it a lot but the thing about it what i'm trying to get you to understand is it doesn't matter how much we talk about it it's how much you actually know about it see you got to learn this stuff for yourself you can listen to me 24 7 watch all my videos like i'll be watching tv shows on netflix and binge watch them and still don't get none of the stuff i'm saying you go laugh you might cry at some of my videos you might listen to some but you're not understanding some of the videos because you're not understanding what i'm actually saying but that's neither here nor there but i know my family understands but i'm talking to the people that's not here the people that's going to watch the replay and trying to figure out what's going on i'm trying to tell you best i can you just gotta buckle up <laughs> and, and and focus on what's going on like lyrics say that lust leads to idolatry sure it does doesn't it doesn't it lyrics doesn't it it does so too many times the love bomb phase tricks us into loving the wrong person you see, I got a parenthesis, the narcissist. I'm going to say this one more time. Too many times the love bomb phase tricks us into loving the wrong person. See, the love bomb phase, see, I got a lot of L's in here. You got love, you got lust, you got love bomb. Uh, let's get into this. Okay, so, hey, how you doing, Impacted Mastery? Welcome, welcome. So think about this. So that love bomb phase, that's when they, that's when you first dating this person. That's when they buying all these gifts. That's when they taking you on all these trips. That's when they tell they introducing you to your mom, I mean to their mom and their dad and their family, all those things. Think about what I'm saying. That is that love bomb phase. It's also the lust phase. Okay, this is where we're going. Let's get a little bit deeper. So when they love bombing you, buying you all these things, telling you all these sweet nothings in your ear introducing you to the mom and dad you know for a woman once a man usually introduces you to the mom or dad he's like oh that's that's i'm here to tell you it could mean something it could mean nothing it could be all part of the strategy of the narcissist think about what i'm saying that's part of it because they know they're not stupid they know that if they introduce you to their mom or dad at that point that's a way to i'm just saying think about what i'm saying but again, that love bomb phase is a trick. It's all part of that lust that's only going to lead to a couple things. A couple things. One of them is you in the bed, and I ain't talking about sleeping, or you pregnant, which I was like, I ain't talking about sleeping. So think about what I'm saying. So they figure if they do all this, it's, it's like a book. I think some of them got a book. If they do these things, they can get this. So if they buy you this purse, if they if they buy you this jewelry and things like that, and they take you on, you know, a trip or a night out, if they show up, you know, like you tell them you out with your girls at such and such club or such and such restaurant, and they show up and you know they, he, he he's a baller, he got money, so he shows up and pay for all y'all dinner. So what he's doing, he's not only impressing you, he's impressing all your girls. So think about what I'm saying. This is all coming to me right now. I ain't not gonna talk about this, but think about this. So he's not only impressing you. He's impressing all your friends. So they're like, girl, you got you a good one. And then when that mask slips, you wonder why your girlfriends like him so much. You wonder why your girlfriend's going against you when you saying this guy's abusive, this guy's manipulative, this guy is, see, he know what he's doing. And women can do the same. They can take it and be a woman because I know people like to get on here. Why are y'all talking about men? Well, if you watch my video, I... Now, I ain't about to explain myself. I ain't got to explain myself. Hey, this I'm talking about a man. Whatever. I'm talking about a man. So this is what I'm talking about. So when he do these things, you have to be, your discernment has to be, well, is he doing this because he loves me? I'm not, not on. Don't, don't get me wrong. Some men do do those things when they're in love with their wife or whatever, and they significant, and they do those things. But what I am saying, they got some men would do these things because it's all part of them just getting you in the bed. So they'll show up and pay for these things or or it's for your you and your homegirls going on a trip. Oh, baby, I got it. I'll pay for y'all flight if you just cover. So now these four girls like, man, yo, you got a good man. But guess what? As soon as y'all break up. No, hold on. Rewind. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I said that wrong. Before y'all break up, your homegirl is trying to uh, holler at your man behind your back. Why is that? Because she sees something in him. He sees something in her. They didn't did some, some, you know, they make eye contact and all these things. 
But again, that's because he only lusting over you. And guess what? Now he's lusting over her and she's lusting over him. So there you go in a, a whole, yeah, let that make sense. Let, let that sink in. But he'll tell you he loves you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Next Bible verse. I'm just saying. Proverbs 625. Do not desire her beauty in your heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. Y'all know a lot of these women walking around with these fake eyelashes. I, ain't, I know that ain't what the Bible talking about, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm just saying. He, he, Shannon showed me this lady video or this picture the other day. Her eyelashes was like out here like this here. I don't like my like some hands. She had shadows down here. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just saying her eyelashes it has nothing to do with this verb. But what I'm telling you is some of these women, see, some of you fellas, you praying for this 5'5", 136, model type woman and all this that and the third hey how you doing Tisha black welcome you praying for all this stuff and she got fake eyelashes on her teeth come out she put them in a cup at nighttime and she only 26 i don't know what happened to her teeth i'm just telling you i'm just saying all this right here is fake she went to the doctor to get that she went what you call them the the butt the uh the butt lifts whatever brazilian butt lift bbl she she doing all that. Yeah, remember that move. I can remember that move with that with that Wayans boy when everything took off. Uh that, that woman took off her legs, she took off her hair. Everything was just fake. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, there you go, Lolly. BBL. I'm just saying. Oh, I just seen something pop in. Let me catch it. Hold on. Let me catch it. Uh so Tisha said, uh, hey, my family, just getting in from Bible study. I started attending. So glad to be here and see you all. Oh, hey, man. Thank you for being here. May God return it to you over and over again. Thank you for being here. Yes, that's it. Well, I need it. I'm going to get you sucker. That, yeah, that's it. I couldn't think of the name of it. I ain't seen that movie in so long. I ain't seen that movie in a long time. But yeah, you're right. I'm going to get you sucker. That's it. That's it. That lady took off about 80% of her body. <laughs> Can't make that up. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is these people, these people, and I know the Bible and I talk, but they don't want you, you know, the Bible, God doesn't want you to get attracted to somebody because of how they look. Because how they look and what they do and how they act is all different. It's different. It's different. I'm going to put that back up just so you can read this again. I know I made it funny at the end of it, but what I'm telling you is do not desire her beauty in your heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. So do not let the physical, the, the curves, the, the legs, the calves, the, whatever you're attracted to, fella, I don't know, the lips or whatever, do not let that be your downfall. When we talk about the women. And same thing for my sisters. Do not let this men, the eight pack and all this other stuff, don't let that be your downfall. Don't lust over this man or lust over this woman so much to where you yourself begin to fall in love with just a physical feature, but yet still you haven't gotten to know this person because, see, once you get to know them for who they are, then you're going to realize this jolly joker, yeah, you're going to want to call him a jolly joker then, this jolly joker, yeah, he works out and goes to the gym, but that's all he does. He don't know how to cook. He don't know how to clean. He wants you to wash his clothes. He Same thing with the woman. Yeah, she fine. She's a dime piece. She got the booty. She got everything shaped like a Coke bottle. And then you get home, house dirty, eight kids running around, got nine different baby daddies. I don't, man, what is going on in here? You got the kid hitting on the back of your head when you're sitting on the sofa. You just got to watch TV, bro. But here it is. Here it is. You didn't got attracted to the dime piece. You lusting over her thinking that's the one. And you ain't asked no questions that you just like, man, she fine. She good. Take her shoes off, feet look like this here. They toes just fighting for a position. I'm just saying. Yeah, like my wife, Bebe's kid. Yeah, kids hitting you in the back like, bang. Like, man, come on, look. They run around, man. Come on, bro. Clothes all over the floor. House smell like a, a, a three-week-old crawfish ball. Have you ever been around Louisiana, been to a crawfish ball? You know that a crawfish or a shrimp or anything like that dies. It really stinks. But that's what the house smell like. Your goofball, you go sit in there. Talk about what she fine. Okay. Okay. Hey, how you doing, Donna Buckley and Kenyatta? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you talking about she fine, yeah. And you got the audacity to say, to introduce this woman. Now, you know how the house is, but you excuse all that because she fine. But you want to introduce her to your fat man. Get up, man, boy, bye, man. 
man, get out of here. I, I can't do it. I don't know how y'all do it. I, I can't. I can't do it. I cannot sit there and go into somebody's house and just think dirty. That goes to men and women. I can't do it. And if it's a woman, I'm trying to. There's no way I can sit there and just take. Nah, excuse, excuse number one is about to happen. You know what? I forgot. I got something to go do. I got to go get my uh my 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 my. my you know, my timing belt fixed on my car. Ain't nothing wrong with my time. I got to go. I got to get out of there. I'm about to make my phone ring itself. I'm about to do something. Matter of fact, you know, I got a smart watch. I'm about to make my watch find my phone so my phone can ring. Like, oh, man, hey, me having a whole conversation. Man, I got to go. Got an emergency and just walk out the house and never go back. I can't. I can't do it. But some fellas will sit there. Some of y'all women would do it too. Would sit there because the brother just so fine. He got the green eyes and the lips. He look like a model. House dirt is on the wood, and y'all want to go in there. That's what you want. To, okay. Right. Teach is on. Teach is on. Everybody attracted to what they're attracted to. I'm not attracted to trash. That's trash to me. I'm not like how Shannon says that my wife gutter snipes. I don't want no, I don't want no gutter snipes. Oh, you, fellas, you shouldn't want a gutter snipe either. I know we laughing, but just think about what I'm saying. Some of y'all didn't been there. Some of y'all didn't been in that position where you step in that joker house. You looking around like, and don't even get me started with the roaches and all that stuff because I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you see roaches on the wall and stuff. You're like, man, hold on, bro. Hold up. You see silverfish running around the house. You don't know a silverfish. Go Google that. I'm just saying the bugs start to come out when you walk in the house. You sitting there, well, he fine. You, you, you like this. If this was my purse, if I was a woman, you got your purse like this here, just looking around because they got roaches crap. Man, get your behind up and go ahead and go home. Just go home. The, 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 the date is over. Whatever you thought about him and how cute he is, it's time to go. Spiders out. It ain't Halloween. That's a real spider. <laughs> that's that's real roaches crawling around here. That, that that is not fake stuff. This is real. You crawl. You looking around. You know, got your stuff. Cut. Man, get up. Give somebody. Give Shannon. If you're a woman, give Shannon or Joy your phone number and say, hey, if I if I hit you with a text, man, not call me nine one one. Call me. That means it's time. <laughs> Cause brothers, hey, give me your number. I'll call you. Hey, I'll call you. Like, hey, bro, you you good? <laughs> Like, nah, brother needed that number so I can, man, get your butt out of there, bro. Roaches and stuff, that's, then you go sit there and eat food? Don't even get me started on that. All right, let me keep going. Let me keep going. My bad. I didn't mean to go off on a funny tangent, but hey, I'm just, I just want y'all to understand. I've been there. I've been in the house. I'm I'm not making this stuff. Been in the house where, man, man, let me tell you, 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 <laughs> you get a slice of pizza. You might want to get more than one slice. I'm not talking about a woman. I'm just saying, I've been at a house. You might want to get all your slices right then and there. You might not want to get just one slice. If you're hungry, go ahead and get your three slices because I can guarantee you, when you go back, when you open that pizza box, the roach is going to be looking at you like, what you want? Like, this is our food right here. You need to go. <laughs> you need to, y'all better order some more. We, we eating. You know, y'all got your food. Now it's our turn. I'm not making this up. Ask me how I know. I'm just saying. You might want to get your stuff and go ahead and sit your butt down and watch TV or do whatever. I'm just saying, because them roaches going to be looking at you like, nah. And I ain't saying that to be disgusting. I'm just telling y'all, yeah. Yeah. You, you put your arm on the rest of the roach down. Hey, man, what? He looking at you like, brother, no, don't try to smush me now. I'm trying to watch the game like you. <laughs> I'm trying to watch. I'm trying to watch TV like you are, brother. Move, put your hand over there. Keep your hands to yourself. That's what the roast tells me. I'm just saying. Hey, how you doing, Ace? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Y'all think I'll just be over here making stuff up? I ain't making this stuff up. I'm not making this stuff up, man. I'm just telling y'all. I know we're here for a serious message, but y'all know how we do over here. I'm just telling y'all. Hey, Sometimes these, these roaches got minds of their own, and they talk to you. They tell you some stuff. You ask them some questions, might tell you how, how many men she didn't had in the house. <laughs> or tell you. I'm, I'm just saying. They might tell you, like, brother, you know what? You, you number nine this week. <laughs> the, the other seven, they left. Yeah, one stayed. He, you know, I'm just saying. Let me keep moving. I don't want to stay stuck on road. Every, somebody go tune in. Like, why are you talking about roaches? They ain't going to miss the whole thing. Out the, go watch the replay. <laughs> watch the replay. I'm just saying. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Liz is, put that, Liz is in here climbing. Liz is saying. <laughs> Players will say the roaches, what you really want, us crumbless creatures, in a DMX voice. That's my best DMX I can do. I know what the real songs say, but, you know, yeah. What you really want from us creatures. 
What you really want from us creatures? I like that. That'll be a song. Be a hit. Nah, I'm playing a hit. <laughs> I'm just, hey, I didn't. Hey, I just started and see lyrics and then took it to. I can see a ro the cockroach saying that. You know what I'm saying? See, it's different. See, when you got cockroaches, usually they come from my side. It's when you see them little bitty roaches and they all crawling around the house. You trying to sit there talking about the girl fine and you just looking around, brother. You got issues, brother. That mean you like dirt in this too. You like dirt. I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm just telling. I'm trying to help y'all. You like dirty. I mean, cause I, I, don't, I don't like dirty. I see a roach. I'm trying to smash it and throw it away or whatever. I do see one, but I'm just saying. I, nah, I can't do it. All right, John. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Let's let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. <laughs> Tamara say raid flag. <laughs> See, there's a huge difference between love and lust. A huge difference, a very huge difference. See, love is 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 it's different. You can feel love. No, I don't think you can feel lust at all. Hey, how you doing, Joy? I guess see, you really look at. I guess if lust led to sexual desires, well, I guess you would feel it then. But you get what I'm saying. Like love, you can feel. You can feel the love and support from people that's around you. It's that lust where you just like, nah, you know, you're looking at her, she a dime piece, looking at him. Oh, that's that six foot five guy I'm looking for. Those are two different things. Very different. It's a huge difference between the two. See, if you're dealing with a narcissist and you're dealing with people like that, let me say, I just seen something pop up. I'm trying to stay, trying to stay on it. Uh, yoke breaker. She said, laughter is good for the soul. Definitely. I definitely agree with, with you there on that, sister. I, Y'all know I love the lab. This is your first time here. Well, welcome to the comedy zone about narcissists. We're gonna learn some stuff. We're gonna laugh about a lot of stuff too. But at the end of the day, we're gonna learn and laugh together. <laughs> I'm just saying. But thank you for that uh super chat. May God return it to you over and over again. Ain't nothing wrong with a little laughing. This is your first time here. Well, <laughs> well, tell somebody, share this out. They might they might need a laugh too. I'm just saying. Might want to get a little hee hee ha ha on themselves. I don't know. So again, there's a huge difference between love and lust. See, when I love somebody, or when you love somebody, or when they love you, you're gonna feel that love. You're gonna feel that that support. You're gonna feel that okay, that oneness with that person. But when it's just lust, lust is gonna be more physical attraction. You know, so you sitting there, you know, you see her walk in like, oh, she fine, or oh, I like what you got on today. You know, you tell her, you know, the lady telling the man, I get that. But the thing about it. That love is going to be different. Love is when that person is sick and you're willing to go over there and feed them soup and, and, and cook them a meal and things like that. Love is when that person can't pay their rent or whatever and you try to help them out. Love is when it, it, it's just different. It's just different. See, the, the, the lust, the desire, and, and the, the nasty dreams you have, what they call them, wet dreams, I should say. The wet dreams you have at nighttime is not the dreams you should be having. In the first place, especially if you're not married to that woman or that man. Newsflash. I know some of y'all don't want to hear that. Y'all lusting over celebrities and say you want to sleep with Idris Alba and, 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 and J-Lo. And, and J-Lo's own name kind of, I don't even like. But anyway, <laughs> that's the first name came to my head. Y'all lusting over these celebrities. These jokers married to somebody else. You lusting over an empty shell, like Juanita said earlier. You, you, you ain't going to never see them. You'll see them on a TV screen. You ain't gonna never meet them. So stop lusting over these celebrities and these rappers and these. Yeah. Okay. That's for a whole nother video. I probably didn't made a video about it. I can't remember, but yeah. We didn't did some stuff about Hollywood. I didn't did too. But I'm just saying, stop lusting over these people. Some of y'all, I didn't know I was gonna go here, but it's coming. Some of y'all want to lust over your pastors and bishops too. Now, let's get into that right quick. You lusting over the pastor and the bishop, and the pastor and the bishop lusting over. Well, he's married or she's married. Some of y'all go to church where they got women. I, I get it. Hey, how you doing, Miss Spanish lady? My point is, you lusting over them. They married, and then they lusting over three, four other women in the church, and same thing with the yeah. So let that sink in. So you think you the one? You think that you got the body type? You think your voice is gonna? Stop him from talking to all these other women. You think that, yeah, well, keep thinking and let me know how that work out for you. That's all I can say. I I want to, I want to, I want to read your book when you write it because I'm pretty sure it's going to be juicier probably than my title I got right now. I want to read that book about 
how you got caught up with the pastor or the bishop thinking that he was going to leave his wife that he'd been married to for 30 years and cheated on her 300 times, but you thought you was the one. Like my sister Georgia said, delusional. You're a delusional. You're not the one. You're not, you, you, like, like DJ Khaled, another one. You are another one. You, you gonna be another one. Yeah, okay. You're another one. So stop blessing over these these fools. We didn't talk about some people that's in the in the pool pit. <laughs> Shannon did a video about it. I didn't did a I didn't did a not a video, but I didn't talk about it, mention it. You over there listening about this jolly joker. This jolly joker doing the most. You know, let's just say thank you for blessing us with with the message that are filled with truth and comedy. Hey, I appreciate. I, I like the way you said that, Liz. Say, say I got on perked up. <laughs> Thank you for uh, that. May God return that to you. Thank you for that super chat. God bless you, sister. We appreciate all that you do. She doing stuff. Y'all ain't checked out. She doing stuff in the music world and stuff. And it's good to have people like that around you. But hey, I only can deliver it the way I know how. Use a little comedy, and you know, let's keep let's keep it let's keep it going. I love what you're saying, Tammy. Say, she said I want my own. She don't want a bald product she don't want a used product she doesn't want the man that's sleeping with the wife that has five girlfriends on the side i'm just saying and my brothers don't want the woman that's married and has 10 guys on the side because this guy does this for this guy buys her this and whatever see if you look at some of these platforms they make comedy of marriage let me tell you what i'm saying so then I, had, I didn't seen it on TikTok and on YouTube where they had a person saying, you know, all of a sudden the phone rings, the husband, you know, the wife is, let's say, doing her hair and the phone ring, the husband picks it up. Hello. And the dude on the phone say, hey, this Bobby, I'm looking for Christine or whatever the woman name is. He like, who is this? He said, well, this is her boyfriend. He like, man, I'm a husband. I'm like, what you mean you're a boyfriend? Like, well, man, well, tell her, and this is how they make fun of it. Well, tell her, you know, since you the husband, tell her I'm going to stop paying all these bills and paying y'all rent and buying grocery and paying that car note. And then the dude like, oh, man, I just was playing. I'm not really a husband. Like, man, we almost lost us a good one. Let him keep taking. See, they're making fun of marriage. I know some people don't look at it like that, but think about what I'm saying. So they're making fun of marriage. So they basically making the brother be or the man be an Ahab sit there and say, well, he gonna let this man continue to cheat with his wife as long as this other Jolly Joker pen. No, y'all both Jolly Jokers. Y'all both goofballs because you know that she's now with another man and no man gonna do nothing for free. So let me just tell you that. So it's not like he's paying all these bills and not getting nothing in return. So the thing what I'm telling you is they're making fun of marriage. They're making fun of a godly marriage is what I should say. So, yeah, tell me you want your own, and I understand it, but they got these people out here that don't want you to have your own. They want you to believe that it's okay for you to have a man on the side. It's okay for you to have a sugar daddy or a sugar mama because as long as somebody paying the bills and we got a roof over our head, we got lights, it doesn't matter. It's all good. That's all bad. It's all bad. That's all a bunch of lust and nastiness going on and don't get me started with that, but I'm, I'm just saying. So think about what I'm saying. But they make fun of this. They do it all the time. Like I told you, when I start looking at things in my spiritual eyes, I see things. I watch it, but I'm just looking at the stuff differently. And they make fun. They got these other couples, you know, you see them. They make fun of the marriage. Like, you know, hey, I'm calling the police because you hit me. And the guy really didn't hit her, but they're just making the stuff like it's funny. But they got people that's really dealing with domestic violence. You see where I'm going with it? They got people that's willing, really dealing with abuse, but these people making fun of it. So that's why when you call the cops, you almost, I see where I'm going. When you call the cops, they don't believe you because these jolly jokers, they watching the same videos you are, so they don't believe you no more than they believe. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's think about what I'm saying. Let's think about what I'm saying. All right, y'all, let's keep moving. We're moving along. Move. Most narcissists use us for their benefit. What I mean, it's what they can get out of you. It's what you can give them. It, it, it might be sexual. It might be, they might marry you because a lot of people are like, well, why they go all the way to the point of marriage? Because you might be the trophy wife. You, what they want to showcase. But the brother on the DL, we're not going to even get into that, but he on the DL doing other stuff. You know what the DL is. He doing all this other stuff. But he got to have, you got to present this image because the image 
Maybe it's because, you know, his workplace. Maybe it's because his family. He don't want to tell his family on the download. I can't say I get it and I understand because I don't, but whatever. Go do you over there and leave that woman alone. I'm just saying. But they got these people out here. They will marry you. They will. I told you it's all part of their plan. They got to have the white. Remember how they always say they're making a dream is owning a home with the white picket fence. It's the same thing. They got this image of having a wife or having a husband. And that's what it's supposed to be. But you get what is called a contract marriage. Meaning that y'all both might know that one of y'all on the down low, maybe both of y'all on the down low, but y'all only get married because y'all can build something together. Some of them even go as far as having children together. But the thing you got to look for is, see, that always built off of lust, lies, and deceit because that marriage ain't really a marriage because they out there, what they call it, an open marriage. They out there sleeping with him, sleeping with her, and doing this with them. And y'all want to get, some of us want to get worked up they want to get worked up on when you see them doing it. It shouldn't surprise you. It shouldn't surprise you when people in Hollywood are getting caught doing this. I, I got to say, that's rich people problems. I ain't got time for that. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, it, it, that's rich people problems. It is. Especially when they come from Hollywood. Now, if it's somebody I know that's different, but they come from Hollywood, it doesn't shock me the stuff they do in Hollywood. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. So love. I know y'all thought I forgot about love. I didn't. Love. An intense, an intense feeling of deep affection. See how it's different from lust? Lust is more sexual desire. Love is going to be more intense. Feeling of deep affection. Like you go feel it, like I said. I ain't forgot about love. I can't do a whole mess about love and lust and don't really talk about love. But let's get, let's dig into this one. First Bible verse. First, first Corinthians 13, 4. Love is patient. I know y'all didn't heard this verse before. And kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. See, what the narcissists do as soon as something happens, you make a mistake, they rejoice at your wrongdoing. Like you, you bake the cake and it didn't come out right. They hee hee, ha ha, and they laugh instead of trying to help you fix the problem. I'm just saying, that was a small example, but think about what I'm saying. You got this jolly joke over there. They laughing at stuff that you're doing. You get in the car wreck, they laughing. That's not love. That's evil. I'm just saying. And I know some of y'all have been in these situations where this person, you thought they love you, and then only to find out, nah, it's not love at all. Everything is not what it seems. We almost sit in, y'all. We're doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Everything is not what it seems. So just realize that love is paid. So they're trying to rush you. That's not love. That's not love. They're trying to rush you. If they're not kind anymore, you know, evil or whatever, that's that's not love. If they envious of the things you're doing, that's not love. And what I mean by that, let's say y'all both work at the same place and you got promoted and they didn't and they start throwing it in your face. Well, what about me? What about you? I, we together. But see, some people just don't understand that these jolly jokers don't understand that they think that just because you got promoted, y'all should got promoted together. We ain't start this job together. I was working here before you did. I'm just saying. But they think y'all need to get elevated at the same time. And that's why a lot of these things happen the way they happen. So if they're being arrogant and rude, that's not love. If they're being abusive and calling out your name, that's not love. When I say abusive, I'm talking about financial abuse. I'm talking about emotional abuse, physical abuse. They mentally abusing you. That is not love. You need to put your foot down. You need to figure out what you're about to do. You need to plan your work and work your plan, meaning you need to get out of that situation, especially if it's been going on all the time, 24-7, day in and day out. And like my brother Rizzo like to say, seven times on Sunday, if those things are happening to you, it's time for you to do something. I'm just saying, it's time for you to do something. You can't continue going down this path because you keep going down the path that you're on with this person that only lusts over you as you love them. See, you cooking them food. You 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 buying them things. You telling them you love them. And they're just looking at you. And they're not really participating. They never cook. They never do any of these things. See, what you got to realize is this person don't, don't love you. I know that's hard for you to find. Like, well, I've been with them for 10 years. 
So you've been with a person for 10 years that only like you enough to marry you because they had an agenda, a hidden agenda to showcase a trophy wife or to tro showcase a trophy husband. See, you didn't know the agenda, but see, the more and more you start to make this person angry, that mask starts to slip even more and more. You start to realize who you're married to. You start to realize that you love them, but they really don't love you. I know it's hard. People always say, well, it's so hard to understand. It is because we, 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 we in our physical form, it is. It is hard to understand that you've been with somebody for X amount of years only to find out they never really love you. It's hard. It's hard to understand. You got children together. You didn't build a business together. You didn't bought a home together. You bought cars together. You didn't went on trips together. You didn't did all these things together, but only to find out that this person, they don't really love you. Rizzo say eight days out of the week. Yeah, they are eight days out of the week. This person doesn't love you. It's hard. It's a tough pill to swallow. It really is. It ain't no, no easy way to put that. Like Tamar say, it's very hurtful loving somebody and they don't love you back. It is. It hurts men. It hurts women. I'm not going to sit there. You know, some men, they got ego. I get it. But it's hurtful to be in a situation where you put out everything. You 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 expressing your love by whatever your you know by touch by feel whatever it is by buying stuff by by telling them stuff by writing letter whatever it is that you do you didn't did all that and you only got a little bit of them so it only shows you that this person that you've been with that you thought that you love they really never loved you they only like you a little bit they lust after you because of your body your physical form they they love that. They love that when you go to the beach in a bikini, my wife is, you know, the bomb.com. My wife is sexy. My wife is fine. Or my husband, when he takes his shirt off, they love that because all the girls are like, oh, I wish I had him. And you're like, no, I got him. Well, do you really have him? Because last time I checked, you really ain't got him either because he's sleeping with him, them, and all them. He's sleeping with Keisha and, 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 and Junebug. Let that sink in. I know they probably go over some of y'all head. I said he's sleeping with you. Keisha and Junebug, and Junebug is not a not a woman, so yeah, let that sink in. But you or us, I should say, was under the impression that this person loved us, and they they, they never did. They used us for whatever it was, whether it was elevation, maybe they maybe they're a public figure, they needed to be married to get the position they in as city council or governor or whatever the case is. But yet still, they sleeping with you, Keisha. Junebug, Bobby, Tammy, and whoever you can name all these names, like DMX named all them names. All women were put some men in there too, cause they sleeping with all them too. And that goes women and men, cause they got women out there. They sleep with other women. I'm just saying. I know y'all don't want to get into none of that, but I'm just telling you. When you love somebody, you show them everything. And see, some sometimes we show people that we love them too quick. What I mean by that? See, narcissists will target you because of who you are as an empath. So if you tell them everything, I just said this before, if you tell them everything on that first day, oh, the last person I was with did this, that, and the third, you are giving them the playbook of everything that they need to hurt you. I'm going to say this one more time. On that first date, on that first date, when y'all talking about where you from, you asking them how old they are, you asking them how many children they have, that's all good questions. I'm not going to say it's not. It's all good good questions. You want to know these things. You ask them, you know, where they want to be at in five years. It's like interviewing for a job. But some of y'all don't want to get into these deeper questions. You don't want to ask, well, how did your last relationship end? And when they say we just grew apart, that's fine. Because that's what I want you to say. Because the reason why I'm telling you that. Don't go tell them, well, you know, I was in an abusive situation. He was physically abusive. You know, I was scared. I'm just trying to find somebody. So they might ask, well, when did that happen? Well, I've been, you know, by myself, no contact for a year. You telling them everything. I don't talk to my mom and dad anymore, you know, or I don't talk to my 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 my, my people and my family no more. I'm kind of to myself. You telling them what you just told them. You just told them you used to be in abuse. You told them. You were scared in the situation. You just told them you no contact with most of your family. You also just told them you by yourself with your children. So they know 
they ain't got a lot of work to do if they're a narcissist because they're like, well, she already by herself. She already not talking to her children. Same thing for the men. He not talking to his family. He ain't talking to it. just him and the two kids at, at home or her and the two kids at home. So all I got to do is go in there and do my little thing. You know, the narcissist do his little thing. He little razzle-dazzle and I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Think, think about what I'm saying. You, you, you telling them too much. You giving them too much information. Too much. Let me see. Brother Rizzo said something. Let me see what Brother Rizzo said. He always dropping gems. Let's see. It says, let another person's actions can be an education for you. If the content of the box doesn't match the manifest or packing slip, well, the truth is right before your eye. Boy, you're dropping. You're dropping. Y'all are dropping zingers in here tonight. I'm going to read that one more time. Let another person's actions be an education for you. If the content of the box, you know, a lot of y'all like to get Amazon and, and all this stuff. If the contents of the box doesn't match the manifest. So if you open that box, you're supposed to have this and you open it up and you got that. Well, I mean, you need to I'm telling you, okay, right before your eyes. Same thing with this, man. You, if you didn't pray for this and, and every something is not starting to match up. That's good, Rizzo. That's good. I like that one. That's my brother. He drop he drops singers all the time on the phone, text message, everything. That's yeah, telling y'all. We got, we got some intelligent people in here. Thank you for that, brother Rizzo. Follow him on his podcast too. Light him up with, with Phil Rizzo. Brother be dropping knowledge on there. I know you got one coming up. It dropped yet, Rizzo, today or when it dropped? I know it's both supposed to drop. Might have dropped the other day. I might be late. I ain't listened to that one yet. I gotta catch up. But uh, light them up with Phil Rizzo. You can listen to him on, I can't say it because my thing right there, on all your, you know, your little Echo Dots and Google and all this other stuff. But yeah. So I understand what he said with that. If it don't match up, the proof is in the pudding. It's right before your eyes. You can see that this is not the person you're supposed to be with. This is not the person you was praying for. And I know some of us don't want to be lonely. Well, I'm telling you, you might need to be. You might need that season of wilderness because you was in a lustful situation, meaning you love the person. They only lusted after you. You need to get your bearings right. You need to figure out who you are and what you want as you know as you move forward in life. You want to make sure that this mistake, I ain't even call it a mistake. You want to make sure that you don't get another goofball in your presence, in your home. So think about that. Think about that for a second. If you, if you can avoid being with a goofball again in life, I'm pretty sure all of us would. What's what why I sign up? Why I sign it? Because I never want to be with a goofball ever again in life. Just saying. All right, let's keep moving forward. We almost done. Fine, almost done. So loving a narcissist is very tricky. Why? Because of the manipulation and the lies and the deceit. Everything that they bring to the table. When you think about it, they don't bring nothing to the table. If you with a true blown narcissist, it's not nothing they really bring. You bringing all the stuff to the table. You bring in the love, you bring in the Bible, you bring in God, you bring in what they they just sitting down at the table and waiting for you to give it to them. See, sometimes we make it too easy for them. And I'm saying we don't talk about men, we make it too easy for the woman, women, my sisters, we make it too easy for the man. So in hindsight, you got to realize that stop making this so easy for them. Stop giving them all the information. Stop giving them all the answers to the test is what I'm saying. Y'all get what I'm saying? Stop giving them all the answers. You don't need to give them all that. They don't need to know everything about you in 30 seconds. This is not speed dating. We're not sitting at the table, and if I don't talk to them right now, I never see them. That's not how that works. It's not how that works. You better start doing some background checks on these people, because if not, you're going to end up loving somebody that's lusting over you again. You might want to check their social media accounts. If they tell you they're all about God, or you go to their, I said this before, and you go to their Facebook or their Instagram or their TikTok, and they talk about devil this and devil that and chakras and this, that, and the third. If you know you ain't part of that, maybe that, that might not be the person for you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Almost done, fam. There's a saying in Louisiana. I'm not making this up. It's a saying. It's a restaurant. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember I used to eat there. Never trust a skinny cook. I know you're like, what is this boy talking about? What does that have to do with anything? Never trust a skinny cook. Never trust. Hey, how you doing, HT? Hey, man, never trust a skinny cook. So I, I say never trust a manipulative, evil narcissist. I know one doesn't have to do with the other, but let's see how they do. See? 
I'm not a fat person. I mean, I love, I love to cook and stuff. As y'all know, I talk about food a lot. But the reason why they say that, if somebody is skinny, Louisiana, the reason why they say that, if somebody is really, really skinny, they don't know what they're doing is what they're saying. Is that true? Nah, they got skinny people that know how to cook. Obviously, I mean, a lot of them. But let's think about this for a second. If the person you're dating or married to or in love with tells you all these sweet nothings and fat pass bar and grill, <laughs> that's exactly hey, how you find that Rizzo. That's exactly, see that boy, my brother can find anything. That's exactly what it is. That matter of fact, that place right there is the first place that, that I ate. I only ate half of it. It messed up my stomach, so I never ate it again. First place I ate. They have what they call a peanut butter hamburger. Can't make this up. They don't put no lettuce, tomatoes, or pickles on there, but they actually grill the burger. Now, all their burgers are good, except that one. I don't like that one. But they slide peanut butter on there, and they melt it down, and instead of mayonnaise, they put peanut butter on there. I can't make that up. But that's it. Fat Pat's Bar and Grill. That is the restaurant. They got a couple of them in Lafayette. They still open. I'm not sure, but good burgers, good food when I used to live there. But yeah, they always said, never trust a skinny cook. But see, if you with somebody... If you're with a narcissist or an evil person like that, you shouldn't trust everything that they tell you just because they told it to you. Let me say I can say that different. You shouldn't just trust a person just because they told you something and you don't go investigate what that person told you. Okay, let's get a little bit deeper. You shouldn't trust what even what I say or what Shannon said, what any of us say or any pastor or bishop say just because they said it. Go open the Bible for yourself and read it. So back to the narcissist. So if the narcissist tells you that I love you, I, I want to be with you, and this, that, and a third. That doesn't mean that you should believe everything this person. Now, if they really love you and you feel that love and support, I'm not talking about that person. I'm talking about the person that you got doubts in your mind if they love you, if they really with you, if y'all on the, you know what I'm saying, in the same book. Some of y'all not even in the same book. They in one book, you in another. Y'all not even close to being on the same page. But what I'm telling you is, see, Never trusting a skinny cook or never trusting somebody evil and demonic and stuff like that. Basically the same. So if somebody say they cook a lot, they usually eat a lot. So they're going to be bigger, usually. I ain't saying this all the time. I'm just saying usually. So if somebody talk about God and 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 and, and, and read Bible verse and all this stuff, they fruit should show that. So if they telling you they, they are praying man or they telling you they are church going woman, but you get one and they never go to church, that should be red flag number one. If they telling you I'm going to Bible study all the time when y'all dating, but when you get with me, you know, the relationship goes a little bit deeper and you never see them go to Bible. Maybe they was lying to you in the beginning and maybe they was only lusting over you just to get you into the bedroom because of your curvy figure or because of your pecs and your, your abs. Hey, how you doing, Drink? Say hi, family. I'm late again. It's all good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being God bless you. My wife say lips may lie, but the fruit doesn't. Examine the fruit. Examine the fruit. If you don't believe nothing I say on none of my videos, that's cool. Examine what's going on. Go read some of these Bible verses for yourself. That's why I like to back stuff up with Bible verses because therefore... You can go ahead and look at the Bible verse. If you don't believe the Bible, now nah, I ain't got nothing to do with this. That's you got that's between you and God. But when we're talking about lust and love, lies, and all these different things, you got to understand that some people you just can't trust what they say. We got a saying too uh, with narcissists when they lips move and they lie. So if you know you were a narcissist and you say they are narcissists, you believe they are narcissists because of all the things they do, you shouldn't believe when they say I love you. So out of all this, I want you to know the difference between love and lust. You have to know the difference. You have to know the difference. It's a difference. If it was the same, it'd be the same word. It would be love and it wouldn't be lust uh, or vice versa. But obviously they different because love is much deeper than lust. Lust is more sexual desires and, and, and wet dreams and stuff like that. Whereas love, uh, love is more, you know, it's a deeper connection. It's like loving God. Okay. This might sound crazy, but a show of hands, and I hope none of y'all put a one in the chat. How many of y'all lust after God? It doesn't even make sense, does it? But if I ask you, 
How many of y'all love God? It should be a bunch of ones in the chat, some praying hands and all kinds of stuff. See, it's a different. You don't never hear somebody say, I lust God. You be looking at them like, fool, what you talking about? But we hear a lot of people say, I say I love God. I, I do. You hear a lot of people say they love God. You never hear somebody say, man, I lust God. I lust after God. What? The, what? what are you talking about? But like I say, if you say love God, it should be a bunch of ones in the chat because my family my ones. Because it's true. I love God. I love my brother Rizzo. I love, you know, my wife. I love, you know, people, my sister Joy and different people that's in the chat. Can't name all y'all. But the thing about it is. I can't sit here and say, why well, I lust after this bird. What? That doesn't make any sense. Because then I'm contradicting what I just said. Like, well, that brother just preached the whole sermon talking about uh, love and lust. And then all of a sudden he say, look, it doesn't make sense. See? So know the difference between the two. We almost about to wrap up. Last Bible verse, John 15, 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It does not say this is my commandment that you lust one another as I have lusted over you. I don't see that in there. That's not what that says. You see it, plain as day. You don't believe me? Open up your own Bible, whether it's your Bible app on your phone, your actual Bible, and you can see what it says. I don't have to lie to you. I don't have to trick y'all. We, 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 we keep it real over here. I don't, I don't have to say that. My brother Rizzo said, I love you back, bro. Strength to you. Amen to that, brother. See, the thing about it is, Lust and love with the narcissist is just, matter of fact, both of them are actually bad. If it's a narcissist, you don't want to love or lust after this jolly joke. Now that I think about that, you really don't want to do either one with them. But once you realize that they do not love you, you got a decision to make. You need to make a choice. You need to understand the situation that you are in. You need to understand that the person that you are with is not with you. Am I making that? I'm trying to say all, I'm trying to throw as many zingers I can so you can get this. The person that you with is not with you. The person that you're in love with does not love you. They lust after you. They like you because of what you can give to them. They like you because of how you look. They like you because you're intelligent or smart. They like you because you got green eyes. These people are weirdos. They like you for different reasons. I'm just saying. Dr. G say leave, not lust. Yeah, just leave. Go ahead, leave. Bye. Get out of here. This is the last thing. We're about to wrap up. Narcissist love is like no other because it's not love at all. See, they love have string attached. What they call love, a narcissist, it has strings attached. So they give you any kind of gifts, it has strings attached. And they buy you a house or a car. Oh, guess what? It has strings attached. They try to take that car or house away from you when you divorce. I'm just saying, ask me how I know. Y'all know what I'm saying is true. Hey, hey, that's the thing about it. They'll tell you I love you, but as soon as you cross them, oh, all bets are off. They taking the house, they taking the children, they taking the cars, they taking the they taking your clothes. And they a man or a woman. They want your clothes too. Like, you go take my clothes, but that's what they do. Yeah, right, Kimberly, you go truth. They taking everything. So you have to understand that when you realize that this person doesn't love you, you got to be thinking about this just a little bit deeper. Yeah, like my wife said, all that love. I'm done, yeah. I'm about to go through the chat right quick. But what she said, she said, all that love is uh, out the window. All that love they've been telling you the last 10, 15 years, they mass found this. Oh, that's all. That's gone. That's done. Over. Finito. Finish. It's, it's over. It's over. They don't love you. It's all about what they see. That's good. See, they've been trying to get stuff out of you your whole life. Not trying. They've been getting stuff out of you the whole time y'all been together. How is it when they discard you or they divorce you? They still try to get stuff out of you. Think about what I'm saying. So they marriage you because of what you can do for them. They divorce you because of what they go get out of you. That's good. They married you because of what you can do for them. They divorcing you because they trying to get something out of you. Because, see, they trying to get the house. I just said they're trying to get the car. They want the kids. Now, let's be honest. They really don't want the kids. They only want the kids because they're going to try to hurt you. With the kids or the, the kids, the children are just pawns. Just think about that. So they're trying to do all these different things to hurt you. And it's sad. They use the kids as pawn. They use the house that you bought together as a pawn. They use the, you know, the property that you own as a pawn. The business you open together, they try to use that against you. It's so evil. Very evil. 
very, very evil. Let me read some of y'all chat. We're about to get out of here. Thank y'all for being here. Hopefully the message was plain and clear about love and lust. Hopefully we ain't go off too too far on the funny. You know, we do a little, little funny, but uh thank y'all, man. Thank y'all for hitting the like button. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for participating in the chat. Tiffany Wall says Satan loves lust. Hmm. Say that again. Satan loves lust. See, that's part of his stuff. That's part of his thing. She said, she said, uh, they like to destroy you. Are they gonna they gonna do everything within their power to destroy you? That's what they want. At the end of the day, they if they can't have you, you know how they say, if I can have you, nobody can. What do you think they mean by that? What do you think they mean by that? If I can't have you, nobody can. They said I didn't heard that too many times on movies and TV shows. I heard somebody say it to me one time years back. Luckily, it didn't work out like it was supposed to, but yeah. My brother is light skinned with green eyes and psychopath. I feel bad for any woman that is deceived by him. See, see, you see what I'm talking about? Light skin. That's what some of these women be looking. I don't want them light skin, you know, green eyes. She just said her own brother is a psychopath. Her own brother is a psychopath. I feel bad for any woman that is deceived by him. And that's what they do. They deceive and lead on, and all that stuff is a lie. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Just saying. Since what I need to say, I gave him his stuff back. Yeah, I, I did. I did a video about that before when narcissists leave stuff in your home. Man, get that stuff out of your house. I don't care if it's pictures, personal pictures for them, and and awards and plaques. Man, look here. What I'm about to do, I'm about to box this up. I will drop it off at your mama's house where you stand there anyway. And hey, be gone. I don't care what it is. This ain't no storage. If you're going to keep it over here, it's a storage fee, like public storage. I'm about to start charging you. $199 a month. You're not getting no discounts over here. $200 a month to keep your stuff stored anywhere in my house. But I ain't gonna even do that because it's about to go. It's got to go. Can't stay over here. Destruction. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Read a few more. We're gonna pray and get about here. Uh Jamin say they're taking your clothes because they're taking your clothes to the witch. Oh Lord. All the way, not not the witch. Hey, hey, they 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 do this. They do this. They'll take your clothes, pieces of your hair, and all this stuff, and yeah. If it ain't in Mexico, it's pr I probably probably in Louisiana or Mississippi, in one of them backwood farmhouses that look like a spooky house, like Freddy Krueger probably in there, or Jason or something. And yeah, they're taking your clothes and casting these spells on you. You don't know it. You don't know what's going on. That's why you, when you get rid of these people, you got to get rid of these people. You, you not only divorce them, you divorce their family. You don't leave none of their things in, in your house. You try to make sure they don't take none of your things out your house. Because the people that I'm, we talking about are evil. Like my wife just said, casting love spells. That's what they doing. Casting love spells. Brother Rizzo say, a uh, wise proverb says, you can win a woman with lies, but you cannot feed her with lies. The truth, sooner or later, will bubble up to the surface. See, the truth shall set you free. At some point or some time, what you do in the dark will come to the light. Thank you for that, brother. You're right, Liz. Motives equals self. That's true. That's true. Let me see. Let me see. Read a couple more. Let's see. My wife said, if anyone says that to you, run. Yeah, you might want to get the get the pack and get your go bag, family. Get your go bag and get up out of there. Get up out of there. Let me see. Let me scroll down a little bit further. Shannon talking about this a lot. Pete, please find out what people's families are into. You are married into that curse or blessings. Yeah, you got to know what they into too. Figure out what they into because they might be into some evil demonic stuff. Here it is. You married into the family. You're going to be part of that evil and demonic stuff. I'm just saying. Steph, you know what? You're right. I remember that movie. With Michael Ely, the perfect guy. Y'all might want to check that movie out. Green eyes, bright. I don't know y'all know the, the actor Michael Ely, green eyes, bright. I don't know how tall the brother is, but let's say he's six foot. I don't know how tall he really is, but got the look. You know what I'm saying? What it, a lot of women go after him. But he played that, that role in that movie. That, that joker was nut, nut crazy. Psycho, goofball. He was crazy. He was straight up crazy and evil in that movie. Go check that movie out if you ain't seen it. The perfect guy. You right. Hey, Queen Shannon, we just wrapping up. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We we just uh, 
coming down, just reading uh last little thing. Somebody's talking about cooking. Let me see. Tom say I'm cooking for my family and listening. This is a whole word. Tom, what you over there cooking, Tom? Tom, what you over there? Tom be showing stuff on our TikToks too. She be cooking stuff. I don't show too much stuff. I might start showing some stuff I be cooking. I spotted out some pork chops and stuff yesterday, but I gotta see if I got some up. <laughs> gotta see if I got some up. But yeah, Tom said I'm cooking and listening. Thank you for uh listening and being part of this. Thank you. Let's see here. Lolly say, my brother is a green-eyed devil in the flesh. The biggest lie. Bro, I done heard of them before, green-eyed devils. They everywhere. <laughs> Y'all in here cooking. Teacher said, I'm cooking too. Hey, it is what it is. Making breakfast for dinner. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with breakfast for dinner. That like little pancakes or something for dinner. All right, y'all. That's that's the end of this message. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for just being part of this live. Still in love with a narcissist, but the only they only lust over you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for hitting the like button. Hey, if you think this video can help anybody, man, share this content out. We're just trying to grow and make sure that people understand and know about these different messages. And if they need a good laugh, hey, you know where to send them to. You know, we got a good laugh over here, but. Thank y'all again, you know, for, for just being here on another Wednesday. You know, Wednesday, I know it's middle of the week. Y'all be having things going on. But I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I promise. Lolly, Miss Spanish Lady, my wife, Rizzo, uh, Jars in here, Pink Girl Teachers, uh, Lyricist, Joanne, you know, so many people, Tammy Russell, Ton. I just appreciate all y'all just being in here. Tony Cabers came through, Kimberly Yinko. I read it from the bottom of I appreciate y'all being here. Because I remember when I started, it was only a few of us. And when I say a few of us, one of them was my wife. So, and I was on the thing, you know, just to try to get somebody to watch the thing. But it was only two, three of us. But, you know, to be able to, you know, grow, you know, and, and hitting 40, 50, you know, almost 60 people in a live, trust me, it takes time. Also, it takes time to heal from narcissist abuse. That's why I'm going with that. So don't think that you're going to get over it in a day or a year. It, it takes time. To go through the healing process. So, again, thank y'all. <laughs> I want to say started from the bottom. Praise the Lord. I thought you was about to put Drake up there. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> Joy say, uh, I can eat breakfast good all day. I was just telling my daughter I want Rice Krispies. I can eat some pancakes right now. I ain't going to lie. Pancakes would be good right now. I'm going to try to convince my wife to cook some pancakes. I can't. I tried to make them. I be messing them up. <laughs> You know, you got to flip them. I get wet stuff all up. Yeah. I cook other stuff. I just got to practice on pancakes a little bit more. But, yeah. Anonymous said, I'm late. Yeah, you got to check out the replay. We about to pray and get up out of here. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you for being here. Just hit the like button. Come back and watch the replay. Comment on it. You know, I love the, you know, the comments after the video is played. You know, comment on it. What you liked about it. What you didn't like about it. What you think I can do better. What videos y'all want to see. I mean, if you got... Any requests or anything like that, hey, hit it up in the uh, comments after the video, and I, I'll get the alerts, you know. So thank you again. All right, y'all, let's pray so we can uh, get up out of here. All right. <laughs> Always good. I hop at home. <laughs> I hop at home. Yeah, buddy. So I got to stay hydrated. I got to drink some water. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's pray. Uh, God, we just want to come together again just saying thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this message. Thank you for every family that's represented in here, every person that's represented in the live, and also the people that are going to watch the replay. Thank you for the people that showed up, whether they're on time or late. I know, you know, time and things like that. But just thank you for everybody just being here, participating in the chat. I also want to pray, lift up our sister, Coach Natisha, uh, in prayer. We know she's dealing with healing from a surgery, and she also says she has another surgery that she's about to go through in the coming weeks. So we want to keep Coach Natisha in prayer uh, and, and let her know that we're here for her. We're praying for our sister as she heals. And like I said, also goes through another surgery, and she goes under the knife once again. So we want to pray for our sister. We're praying for everybody else that's dealing with any kind of sickness or any kind of diseases or any kind of, you know, whether it is cancer or whatever it is, we're praying for just the removal. The doctor always say, you know, they got the last say so. I'm here to tell you, here to testify, the doctor never has the last say so. God has the last say so on each and every one of our lives. So we thank you 
for you just being that that you know that just introducing us to different things and showing us that no matter what man says you has the last say so in our life so thank you for the the lights thank you for the water thank you for the gas thank you for the food thank you for just different things that are going on we know gas prices are rising we know food prices then rose we know you know different things are going on you can see the the war and all these different things that they are doing we're just praying that everybody just prepare for you know different things like the shortage of food supply just start stacking up on things and doing different things that you need to do so we're praying that this reaches so many people that they, they they get the message about you know getting food and 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 getting supplies and just stacking up learning how to grow your own vegetables and things like that something i need to learn as well growing vegetables and fruit right in your own yard you can do these things so we're just giving us just praying that you give us the knowledge and just just the strength and courage to just step out on faith and go out there praying for plant a fruit tree or two, uh, plant some potatoes or some herbs or some onions and things like that. So we just pray that we all gain this knowledge. What do we need it tomorrow or need it next year or need it three years from now? I think at some point or some time, we are going to need to know how to produce food and supplies for ourselves. So we just need to learn it now. Why wait until it happens when we can learn it now? So thank you again, Holy Father, for everyone that's that's represented thank you for the family members that are represented we don't know what the family members are dealing with but we know certain family members are dealing with certain things so we want to cover them in prayer as well heaven father and we want to bind up everything that was spoke and and said if anything came out uh evil uh or anything want to bind up those things or heaven father anything that that was said you know that that was untrue or anything i want to make sure that i'm corrected and i matter of fact i'm gonna go back and watch this video for sure just to make sure that everything i said was in right and and in loving and uh respect to you oh heaven father so just again we're just thankful and we're just praying and we're just you know showering love and, and learn, learn the difference between lust and love so thank you for just blessing us thank you for giving us another day here on this earth but we know everybody didn't wake up this morning so we want to thank you for that as well so thank you this and many other blessings in your son jesus name amen 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 So thank y'all again for being here. I appreciate it. I'm just reading some of y'all stuff. Oh, Torn in there throwing down. Let me see. She said, yeah, I forgot she, she eat a lot of vegan food. She said she eating vegan crab cakes, baked potatoes, and green. That sounds good. That sounds good. You gonna drop a video on that? <laughs> Torn, you gonna drop a video on that? You about to uh, send me the video. I, 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 I never really, I don't think I, the only thing I ever ate vegan was a vegan cookie. And I ain't like that. It was from uh Whole Foods. I ain't like that some years back. But you had to send me a recipe for that. I'll try it, you know, just to try it out and see a vegan crab cake. Hmm. You send me send me that in the message. I'll I'll try that. Give me my wife. We'll figure out how to make it and uh figure that out. But again, God bless y'all, man. Thank y'all again for being here. Awesome. Let's throw up some of y'all stuff. Vegan crab cake. That sounds good. Jasmine said, I have crab cakes in the freezer. Are they vegan, Jasmine? Are they <laughs> No, I'm messing with you, Jasmine. I'm messing with you. <laughs> I'm messing. You're welcome, sis. You're welcome. You're welcome. And check us out. You know what I'm saying? We are, we all live all throughout the week, so we all here doing stuff. It's like every day you got something going on, whether it's Clubhouse or YouTube or TikTok or something. Shannon was on TikTok last night on a live, so y'all able to catch her. Yeah, you're right. Except our paycheck. Yeah, they're not going up. They show not going up. You right about that. You right about that. Thank y'all again. Like I say, thank y'all. I'm about to get off of here and uh might go give me some something to eat. Ain't gonna be no vegan crab cakes, Tom, but I'm gonna give me something to eat. I ain't got no vegan crab. Cake. I don't know how to make that. You send me the recipe though, I might might try, it, you know. It's good to try different foods. But what I said in the prayer was real. Y'all, we need to start stacking up. I'm gonna say this and I'm about to get out of here. Start stacking up on different things like peanut butter. I said this before. I said it again for a reason. Start stacking up on, you know, you eat peanut butter and, and jelly and jams. Learn how to can food. I was telling Shannon, we, we walked in Walmart the other day. It was weird because I've never seen a pallet full of uh, mason jars in a Walmart. I'm going to say this again. I have never seen a pallet full of mason jars in Walmart. What does that tell you? Tell me a few things. One, people are buying mason jars and they're running out of stock. Two, People are doing a lot of canning because why are they preparing? I'm just saying. A pallet full in Walmart. I've never seen Mason Jar. I've seen it like maybe on the shelf, like a few. It was a whole pallet full, two pallets, because they had the big Mason Jars and they had the smaller Mason Jars. So I'm just telling you, and they still got, if you, I don't know if you noticed, me and Rizzo talked about this before. 
I think he said up in his state in Ohio, they still had um still be having bread shortages and milk shortages in Ohio. Down here, I still see like spaghetti noodles and rice sometimes. They be having shortages in Walmart and different stores all the time. So I'm just telling y'all, just stock up. Just buy what you can. I ain't saying go out there and spend your whole paycheck in Walmart, but just a little bit by little bit. And then buy you some seeds. Buy some seeds so you can learn. That's what Shannon and I about to do. We about to learn how to plant our own vegetables. Go, go get a couple of fruit trees. I know it's not a time to plant. We're supposed to plant them, I think, around December, March, but we still go plant them anyway. Plant a few, a, a few fruit trees. And then we we'll also go uh, probably try hand the vegetables, you know, like potatoes, onions. Uh, Shannon want a lemon tree. You know, just different things. I'm just telling y'all, just go ahead and do that stuff right now. Uh, Tom say, uh, Jam, I just moved here to Texas and the pickings is slim with finding vegan food. Yes, I think some of the stuff you got to order offline unless you go into Whole Foods, but Whole Foods is so expensive. But yeah, it's so expensive. But yeah, that's what we come together for. It's about the message, but also about learning. Yeah, so get you some dry beans, get you some rice, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, peanut butter, jelly, uh, sardines in the can, Vienna sausages. Y'all might want to write this stuff down or come back and write this, uh, write it down. I'm just saying those things, those canned vegetables, things like that. Uh, final state, learn how to grow your own vegetable. Just do it now. Don't wait until it happens. Then you run around the store trying to figure out, start buying your seeds now and doing that stuff. Uh, Tammy say Amazon online. Got a lot of stuff. I did see some stuff, you know, for, uh, I know for uh, vegetables and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, yeah, we all got to meet up because Joy in Dallas, Ton in Dallas, I know Jasmine in Dallas, we in, we down here in Houston. So at some point or some time, whoever else in Dallas or Houston, we got to, like, meet up and just come together, you know, just how they say that, break bread. <laughs> Try to get my brother Rizzo and uh, his wife down here, too. I know y'all the way in Ohio, but at some point or some time, it'd be cool if we all could meet up and, you know, come together and just, you know, just be in each other's presence and stuff and just meet and talk and you know eat or do whatever but uh yeah so if you're in texas area hey well, let me see kimberly say stores are supplied so differently here in dallas than in ohio cleveland kimberly you in dallas too another one in dallas i didn't know she was in dallas okay see learning all kind of people in texas but uh yeah we got to pull something together at some point or some time and uh get together and uh figure out but again get y'all supplies family get y'all supplies Get y'all stuff. If you don't remember nothing, I say, hey, go Google some stuff. Like, what's good stuff to stack up on? I can tell you rice, oats, wheat, stuff like that, dry beans, all that stuff. Get you, And I, one thing I was looking at, I'm going to say this, I'm getting off. One thing I was looking at on uh, in a couple of stores is getting, you know, I don't know if y'all remember this, but when I was when I was a child, like, you know, probably about 10 years old or less, uh, probably, well, less. I remember my grandmother used to have these uh, five-gallon buckets. That's what she used to put her rice and dry beans and, and stuff like that in. So that's what I'm about to get. I'm about to get me, you know, about four or five buckets and fill them up and have one filled up just with red beans, one filled up just with rice, one filled up just with, you know, whatever, you know, dry beans or spaghetti, whatever I want. And, uh, you know, fill them up. And then you got, but you got to get the one that's food grade. I learned that after doing my research. So they don't just go get a five gallon bucket because all of them not food grade. You need one food grade with the lids, with the seal. And you, you hammer them down with a mallet. That way they seal it and you keep them that way for a while. So stock up on your dry foods and check that out, family. Check that out. But uh, let me see. Let me see what Aisha said. She said, I'm in Cali, but we good on food for at least two years. My mom has a deep freezer and we have two fridges. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. It's good to have. All that different, especially having a freezer, two freezers, a couple of refrigerators. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm I, I'm with you on that. Telling y'all, just start stacking up a little bit, you know, maybe extra $20, 30 because beans don't cost them like a dollar something a bag or whatever. But I guarantee you the price is gonna keep going up on this stuff. So buy it now and just stack it up, get you some buckets or whatever you need, containers, stack it up, learn how to grow some of this stuff, stuff that you like to eat, tomatoes. Some of y'all love onions, y'all love uh salad and stuff like that. We can grow this stuff ourselves. Watermelon. My wife loves watermelon. You can grow watermelon and all this stuff yourself and have it in your own yard. I'm just saying. All right, family. That's the message for today. Uh, let me see. Christine say you also grow potatoes in a bucket with salt. YouTube, they sprout easy. Shannon, I was just talking about that, like what we can put. I was thinking about getting them crates, uh, Christine, getting crates and putting vegetables in there, putting the dirt in there, putting the vegetables. I'm glad you said that. Okay. 
Shannon said she just seen that. Yeah, we love potatoes, red potatoes. I, I love all kind of potatoes. So yeah. All right, family. And learn how to fish. Learn how to fish and crab if you're in an area where you can get fish and crab fish fish, because that's something else. Learn how to go fish for yourself and your family and learn how to crab is something else. I seen somebody say something about water filters. That's a good one too. Getting water filters, stacking up on some of this stuff. I ain't saying go crazy and go spend your whole paycheck. Just a little bit at a time. You know, $20, $30 set aside, 100 bucks, whatever it is, and go do some of that stuff. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Thank y'all for being here. God bless y'all. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you late, hey, go check the replay. Hit the like button. Follow everybody you know that's here from YouTube or, you know, uh, uh, got podcasts like Rizzo and everybody. And, hey, we're in this together, family. So whatever I can find out, we uh, we can share. Jammer say back home, we fried a crab leg. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we see Louisiana, we fried a whole crab. We got soft shell crabs. We'll fry the whole crab. The shell is soft and they stuff it usually. They can eat the whole thing out. And, you know, we eat fried frog legs, all kind of foods. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Thank you, too, George. That's my sister right there. Thank you, too. All right, man. See y'all next time. God bless y'all. Uh, stack them on your food. Thank you again. See you. Play a little music and we're going to get up out of here. Well, actually, I'm going to hit y'all with the. Uh, let's play some music before we get out of here. Hold on. Die each other with the thing.